Hey, guys, it's time for Breakthrough with Coach Lou. Coming to you live from Accelerate Life University, XLR8Life.com. Coach Lou will help you break through anything that's stopping you. Are you ready to get the motivation, the energy, the life, and all the success you really want and deserve? With no further to do, here's Coach Lou. Here's Coach Lou. Hey, what's up? What's up, guys? Good morning. Good Monday morning to you. It is going to be an amazing week. You may have noticed, <gasps> Coach was a couple minutes late this morning. Yes, we had a couple of minor snafus on the tech side. Um, why, I'm not sure. And we are looking like we're teched out on Facebook. I don't know if you're on my Facebook, my regular Facebook page. Let me know what we got going on because it looks like we're stuck. We're not stuck. Yeah, gotta love Facebook, right? All right, so there we are. Now I got my comments up. This way, if you guys have questions, hit them out to me. And you know, I was thinking about what to do this week's show on, and I know I had kind of planned something for this week, and then it hit me. It really hit me like a brick. I need to go over each one one more time for you just to go back through and remind you how important H1 really is. And you might be seeing this show for the first time today going, Coach, what is, what is H1? You know, what, what is it, some kind of new disease or, you know, we're going to have to get a vaccination for that? You know, what is this H1 that, you know, that's spreading around? Well, I want to spread H1. This is a thing we want to spread around. And you know what H1 is? H1 is health first. If you've been on me, with me the past few weeks or you're always on the show, you get it. If you did the, uh, the seminar with us, you get it. You know what H1 is. Okay, and you're going, what do you, what do you, you know, you don't have to go over that again, coach. But I do for the new listeners and the new folks on, H1 is putting your health first. The reason I say this and it created the H1, I'm going to give you just a little back history here. Um, I was really impressed with Ford, Henry Ford, when he, uh, I don't know if it was Henry or was whoever was the uh, CEO of Ford at the time, they did quality as job one, Q1. And I thought, you know, that's pretty important. That's actually really important because it's the quality that makes a difference. Okay. It's the same thing with your life. Is it how long you live? Well, you might say, yeah, that can have a lot to do with stuff. I do want to have a long life, you know, but it's the quality of that life, the quality of living that matters. And you're like, oh, yeah, I kind of get where you're coming from here. Well, let's do a little more than kind of get where I'm coming from here and go into the idea of really getting where I'm coming from here. What is your quality of life? That's the important part. Where are you? Do you wake up with energy in the morning or do you wake up tired and wore out and everything else each and every day? What is your quality of life? That is the big question to be answered. And I think it's super important. Put in the chats, you know, depending on where you're watching me this morning. I've got several chat monitors open for the different channels. What is your quality of one to ten of your life? How do you feel? You know, what, what is that, that quality of life? Talk to me about that. Is it full of energy? Is your energy at a level 10? Is your attitude at a level 10? Or is it at a level 1? What is your actual quality of life, guys? Tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. What is that quality of life? And bear with me here. We have a couple of little issues um, yeah, no biggie, got it fixed. And that's the quality. I don't know what happened with our last update here, but something kicked off some of my, my parts of the show. So we did have a little bit issue. 
But you know what? The quality of life, the old me would have been like all jittery and oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to be five minutes late. And, oh, this is a disaster. And the, the new me was like, I can just do a couple of little clicks while I'm talking here because I've learned to do two things at once, right? You know, like we always can. Um, what is your quality of life? Did you get a rating for me? One to ten, eight, seven, four. Is a four the kind of person you would date or marry? as far as energy and quality of life. And you might be going, oh, heck no, coach. Okay, so if you're a four, why does your spouse want to be married to you? Or why would they date you in the first place? You see where I'm going? And this is why health first is so important. So H1, guys, get on that concept. Now let's talk about H1. Let's review what we've done over the past few weeks in case you haven't been on the show. In case you haven't seen it, you can always go back and see it at xlr8life.com and register for our free blog. You don't have to, and I'm putting that in the chat if you're on my personal Facebook page, you don't have to uh, be the kind of person that goes, um, hey, you know, I just, I, I uh, you know, got to do all this change at once. What it is, is you need to adopt a lifestyle. And uh, I'm not telling you what you have to do. I'm telling you what you need to do if you want to have the life that you want to have. And that's the important part. Let's have the life we want. Do you want more energy? You know, nobody wants to eat tofu and beans, okay? Nobody wants to do it, but you can always go back. As I was saying, I put the links in there. You can always go back and see um, our previous shows. So register for the blog. It's free. I do make, I do request you register because we don't want spammy kind of garbage on there. We want it to be a nice private community for you guys so that it's not, you know, you go on there and somebody's like harassing you to buy a product somewhere or something. So our, our blog is private. It's member only, but it's free. You just got to sign up for it. So it's really awesome. But so go back and watch the shows over the past. It's been five weeks. We've done five weeks of H1. But let me give you a quick review and I'm going to cut you loose early this morning. Um, Week one, we talked about dietary. Now, we did not say putting you on a diet. Notice the first three letters of diet spell out die. You feel like you're going to die when you're on a diet. And the problem with diets is, you know, you got the keto diet and it's eat fat only, you know, and very little anything else. The problem is people bastardize these diets and I'm going to eat all the bacon and steak and bacon burgers without buns that I want. That is not the the ketogenic diet at at its base. The ketogenic diet is very big on getting the healthy fats in, the clean vegetables, the things that don't spike your blood sugar, et cetera. I could teach all day long on the true ketogenic diet. But again, that's not what you need to know. And then you have the vegan, the entire opposite. Well, it's not an animal product, so it's okay. And, you know, whether you're going totally keto and you're going crazy keto or whether you're vegan and you're going, oh, you're you're going to hit some bones here for me, coach. Yeah, I'm going to hit some bones. Do you think as a, a vegan that maybe no animal products would steer you towards fruits and vegetables? Probably. Have you ever gone in a vegan restaurant and seen 82 different versions of the vegan cupcake that's loaded with sugar? And flour. Well, it's not an animal product, so it must be okay. BS. Now, if that's your personal belief, and that's why you're you're vegan, is you don't want to eat an animal product because of the uh, you know the, your your social feel about it. I respect that, but doesn't mean you, for your health that you can eat cupcakes and pastries and everything else just because they're vegan. You see what I'm saying? Now, in the true nature of a vegan diet, you know, if you're eating fresh raw vegetables and fruit and, you know, really clean foods, that, that's a different story. But to tell me I'm vegan and, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know why I'm so pasty looking and so unhealthy. Well, because you can't sit there and eat vegan cupcakes and think that you're doing the right thing by your body. You may be doing the right thing by your, your emotional beliefs. But you're not still not taking care of the body. And we could go down every single freaking diet that you've been exposed to. And I could rip them all to shreds. So what is the, the, the key to diet? 
dietary lifestyle balance. Number one, making sure you're getting the key nutrition that you need, that there's nothing left out. You might be going, coach, but I, I want to be vegan. I don't want to eat animals. And that's, that creates a protein problem. Okay, there's other forms of protein and ways to combine them so they're complete. So you can do it. You just got to put the effort into it. But the thing is, the second key to it is you've got to make it sustainably enjoyable. Okay, and that's a, a, a two-part series on that. That's sustainable means you can do it, that you don't have to stop five times a day and try to create a meal and sit down and say, oh, I got to stop and, you know, cook for two hours and, you know, then I can continue my job or my business. No, sustainable is doable that it fits into your day, but enjoyable. You've got to enjoy it. If you don't like what you're eating, you're not going to stick with it. So you might say, well, a lot of the good foods I don't like. Well, there are a lot of things that maybe you don't like. So find the good ones that you like and do those. That's it. That's, that's my whole point to that. Simple. Find what you like that's also good for you and do it. Okay? Make sure you're getting your nutrition. Be a self-study. Learn about nutrition. But don't sit there and go, well, I don't really like this. I don't like that. You can switch things up like a simple salad, depending on the dressing you put on it makes it a whole different experience, okay? Now, I'm a big proponent of eggs for the protein and the brain health and everything else. If you choose not to eat eggs because, again, it's an animal product, that's your business. But for all the rest of us out here, if you go, oh, they raise cholesterol, they do this, that, and the other, there's so much of this debunk that myth, it's not even funny. But I don't want to sit here and discuss that for hours and hours. Again, there's, there's another time and place for that. But let me tell you something, eggs are one of the most amazing sources of protein, probably the best, and also of all the brain health nutrients and other nutrients that your body needs. And you might be going, coach, I haven't seen you wear glasses in a long time. You know, you had that eye surgery. These are just literally computer tinted glasses because, you know what, I have noticed that as many hours as I spend in front of a computer these days, um, as we do the show, we do our trainings, we do our classes, we do our auction on Friday night, which is five, six hours in front of a computer. And I don't sit on my butt a whole lot, but when I am on my butt, I seem to be in front of a computer. So yes, I'm learning that it is better to throw these babies on and they work pretty darn good than to, you know, hey, I can do this. But then by the time I'm done with the show, I'm like, oh, my eyes are dry and miserable. So that was another thing we covered um, in the seminar and over the past weeks is, you know, your sleep science. How do you, are you really sleeping enough? Are you really getting quality sleep? You know, are you, do you have your bedroom set up for sleep or do you have it set up to watch TV and, and you know, the kids and the pets are hanging out in there and, you know, and, 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 you know somebody's up late and, you know, they keep the TV in the living room on. Oh, you got to stop that BS. You know, you, you're, the, you're the ruler of your house. You, 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 and if you're not, maybe you're one of the kids and you're going, oh, God, you know, I can't. Everybody's on different schedules. Get some headphones, get some earplugs, go in your own little bedroom, get an eye mask if you have to, if it's too light. And, you know, you got to get away from that. But one thing you can really control is no electronics an hour before bed. Sorry, but the old, oh, I'm going to fall asleep to the TV screws up your, your sleep cycles. It's just what it is. You want to sleep better? Turn that crap off an hour before bed. Okay, wear a, wear a pair of computer glasses. Um, something that, that blocks out that blue light. It's not the woo-woo. Everybody's like, oh, it's the woo-woo, the blue light. No, it is a simple fact that blue light inhibits the production of melatonin in your body. And melatonin, not only is it your sleep hormone that it, that it, it triggers off, the melatonin is also a huge antioxidant. So... When you talk about, you know, stuff like cancer prevention and stuff like that, usually antioxidants come up. Now, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not selling you on any cures, this, that, or the other. But think about it. You take away the melatonin, you take away the sleep, and you take away antioxidant. Both of which, sleep and antioxidants, can tend to be really good for promoting health. How about stress? We talked about stress over the past few weeks. You know, what's stress reduction? What's stress relief? Stress reduction is that in which you remove stressors up front. Planning, my God, is one of the biggest stress reducers. 
If you plan and you're organized and you're focused and you look on solutions and outcomes rather than, oh my God, what I got to do? Holy shit, if we all went on what we had to do every day and really did that to-do list, you never get through it. But three quarters of it's not necessary to get your outcome. And I'm going to give you a quick example. I know we started the show late. I know you guys got to get to work, et cetera. So do I. I've got a meeting pretty soon. So (laughs) got to be in that. But listen, uh, let's use a a financial example. You're a salesperson and you got to make $1,000 a week in commissions. So your goal is to make $1,000 this week. So Monday comes along, that means you're, you you got to make $200, usually you got to make uh, 82 sales calls, close three deals, uh, send 42 emails a day to, to make that happen. Sales is not easy. I know if you're in it, it's not easy. So here's the deal, all right? Monday morning comes along and do, 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 and you start doing your to-do list and uh, you call a client and he orders something that gives you $3,000 in commission. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Do you still go, okay, great. All right, let me call Joe Blow. Let me call this guy. Let me continue calling on my list. Now, I don't mean you sit back, put your feet up and go, I'm done, yay, get lazy. But you start going, you know what? 38 out of these 42 never, ever answer their phones. But, you know, the boss is watching my outgoing and I, you know, I got to, got to, call them if I'm not hitting my sales number. So let me call the four that might get me more commission and I'll have a a phenomenal week. Um, You know, maybe you don't have to send out cold call emails. Maybe you don't have to do cold calling that week. Maybe you can focus on working back with your, you know, take one day and, you know, nurture your current clients, especially that one that just gave you a sale that made your week. And, uh, you know, go, okay, I'm going to order a a fruit basket or, you know, or something I'm going to send to their office as a thank you and focus on growth. And then maybe you go, you know what, there's been this little course I wanted to take that's two or three hours. I'm going to take that to to sharpen up my skills this week. It's about the growth, the, the outcome you hit. Do you really have to do each and every step? And you might be going, well, you kind of should because that's your job, all right? So, you know, there might be that mindset behind there or somebody's telling you, continue doing your to-do list. Sometimes you're not in control of that. So let me ask you a question. You're a mom and you're supposed to go pick up the kids at three from school, take them to soccer practice. And, you know, you've got an elderly relative you're dealing with who's got to be 315 at the doctor's visit. And you're going, oh, my God. And, and you start to get overwhelmed and you're going, I don't know how I'm going to pull this off. And then one of the kids calls from school and says, Mom, Sally Sue wants to, to you know, go, go have an ice cream before soccer practice. And Sally Sue's mom is going to pick us up and take us and even bring us home after she takes us to dinner. Well, okay, are you now, it's solved. The outcome's there. The kids are taken care of. You can go take your mom or dad or whatever relative maybe that needed to go to the doctor. And you might even be able to go sit down at a coffee shop for 15 minutes and have a cup of coffee or have a snack and go, you know what? I'm going to take a minute for myself. I'm going to breathe. See, it's the outcome. You could sit there and still drive to the school and drive to the soccer game without your kids because they've already been taken care of. So would that be the sensible thing to do? Would you do it anyway when the outcome is done? You see, and I know these are overly simplistic, but it is so when you apply this, it isn't so simplistic. It's just the real thing. Okay, we talked about breathing. You know, and I don't, again, we're, we're short on time this morning. So a good nasal breath in, breathe out through the nose. But one of the important things is to try to train yourself to exhale a little bit longer than you inhale. And there's many different breathing exercises I taught on the seminar. But the, the reason for this is we tend to breathe up here. And what we really want to do, I'm forgetting I'm wearing a new microphone. And I probably just popped your eardrums out with that. Um, 
what you really want to do is get that air down into, and you can't see on the video here, into that lower diaphragm and really expand it. It's not going to give you a belly. Don't worry about it. It goes right back. Because on the bottom side of your lungs, your oxygen transmits twice as efficiently than up here on the top side. That's why people get <laughs> stressed up here and they're breathing up here and they feel like they're getting worse and it's a, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So back to the stress thing, okay, we had the stress reduction. You can do that by planning. Stress relief is that point we already kind of hit on it of taking time to wind down, unwind, meditation, prayer, go for a massage, uh, take a hot tub, go in the uh, sauna, go for a run, uh, whatever it is, listen to some music, dance. I don't know what it is for you, but something that makes you feel good again and gives your brain a break when you're stressed out. See, the physiology, when you move, you stimulate the feel-good endorphins, which take away the stress, okay? That offsets the, the feel and feeling of the stress. So stress reduction is reducing the possibility of stress coming by planning and being organized. Stress relief is, okay, there's stress anyway. We're never going to avoid it, but what do I do to counteract what the damage it's done to my body? So does that make sense? All right. I know, you know, you're going, hey, this is a breakthrough show and we're talking a lot about health. Well, because that's the foundation. Okay, next week we're going to shift gears a little bit, but I really want to get this into your brain and into your heart and soul. So then we talked about hydration. Unless you have kidney issues or some medical contraindication, alkaline water is the best by far. We live an acidic lifestyle. Stress creates uh, acid. Exercise creates acid. Even though exercise is great for you, it still creates lactic acid. Environmental toxins create acid in your body, etc. Flushing that out with a good, clean, fresh, alkaline water that's properly sourced. Tap water that's been, you know, alkalized at, at, by a machine is still tap water. It still contains chlorine. It still contains all the uh, fecal matter. Yeah, call it like it is, poop. Uh, you think, you're like, oh, but they treat it with chemicals to get rid of all that. Well, now it contains chemicals, too. And, you know, you got to look at that and go, tap water is not the answer. And it's a very easy way to tox our water supply. If you're concerned about terrorist crap and stuff like that, which happens. Um, so you don't want to, you don't want to drink tap water. Okay, plain and simple. So then we really took all of these factors and then there was fitness. Don't forget fitness, the F word. Um, start moving. You might be 350 pounds and you haven't been off the couch in you know years. Start walking back and forth in the mailbox instead of taking a golf cart. You know, start, you know, sit there while you're watching TV and get some exercise bands and start doing some curls. And you might say, well, I can't walk to the mailbox. I am literally in a wheelchair. Okay, but you can do some curls with some bands. You know, you can do some wrist curls with some cans of soup to start strengthening your arms up. You can bend at the hips and, and do some crunchy stuff. What I'm saying is get moving. Okay, it doesn't mean you jump right into a CrossFit and get your shoulder ripped out of its socket and have to go for surgery because you're throwing up weight over your head. You got to throw on the ground because you can't bring it down. Irresponsible. Or, you know, you haven't run in 10 years and you're going to go run a 10, 10 mile marathon and, you know, you're going to have heel spurs and you're going to, you know, all kinds of stuff and your knees are going to be this big when you're done because you don't run 10 miles when you've never run before. You get out and you walk first. But see, these are all things you do. So I just wanted to touch base and kind of bring that all back around to us because it is so. And I mean so ultra important, guys, to get this thing called H1 under control. Now, not later. Doesn't mean you change everything overnight. You make a plan. This week, you go, you know what? I'm going to cut out processed breads. Okay, if I'm going to have a bread type product, I'm going to switch it to almond flour. I'm going to walk three times for 30 minutes this week. I'm going to switch to alkaline water. I am going to meditate or pray once a day for 10 minutes. I'm going to take a break for me. I'm going to plan my week on Sunday evening before my week starts to reduce some stress. And I'm going to start to be more conscious of my breath. 
that's not that much. You're going to breathe anyway. You're going to eat anyway. You're going to drink something anyway. You're going to have to cope with your schedule of the week anyway. Why not be more prepared for it? Okay, do that for, yeah, make one change in each category for the next seven to 10 days. And then go, okay, how do I feel about that? Well, I'm a little less stressed. The kids like me a little more. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking a little better in my jeans. Not a ton, I'm just a little. But you know what? I'm waking up earlier. And you know what? I'm sleeping a little bit better. I don't wake up feeling like I haven't slept. Or, you know, like I can't go to sleep at night. Or I'm jumpy and jittery all the time. And now I feel a little bit better. Then you take and you keep that habit. You've got to keep that habit going. Then you add a new habit in each one, you know, two, three weeks out, another another step up, you know, and I'm going to make sure I have a salad every day. I'm going to make sure I'm getting my vitamin intake that I need. You know, white bread and burgers doesn't give you a whole lot of nutrients, okay? But now you add a salad in with a bunch of colorful vegetables, which represents oftentimes a lot of the nutrients that's in them. See, it's kind of color-coded. And that's what's kind of cool. God, nature, however you call, kind of, you know, built some of this stuff in that, you know, like yellows and oranges have a lot of beta carotene. Those are, you know, been related to eye health. Uh, greens tend to be very alkaline, uh, you know, and stuff like that. Berries are loaded with antioxidants. You'll notice this stuff. It's cumulative. And then maybe you add on going to the sauna once or twice a week. Uh, sweating out the toxins. They've been proven to pull out heavy metals. And before I leave you this morning, and I'm going to have to leave you because I do have to get to a meeting. Um, no, it's not a Workaholics Anonymous meeting. <laughs> Even though maybe if there was a such thing as Workaholics Anonymous, I would have to go to it because I'm always working on something for you guys to make our lives better. Something. So I love it though. I love the ongoing working. Um, and I lost my train of thought there. Oh, the sauna. Yeah, before I go on that, they did a study in Finland that people that saunaed one time a week, there was a 25-year study. And I mean, it's this, you can look it up for yourself. But the gist of it was people that saunaed one time a week had like a 10% reduction in sudden cardiac events over those that never saunaed. People that did it twice a week reduced it by like 22% or something. And I'm paraphrasing here. People that sauntered four, five, six, seven times a week had up to 75% reduction in a sudden cardiac event. Uh, that's big, considering cardiac events take how many lives a year? Okay, way more than COVID or the flu or other stuff. Sudden cardiac events take many lives a year. Not so much in Finland. Hmm. Interesting thought process there where sauna is a very common thing. And these days you can get them anywhere. You can go to Perspire. They, they have sauna memberships. And I, I love Perspire because they're extremely clean facilities. But I went out and got my own sauna. If you want to know, I'll send you, I'll set you up and how to get your own. It's not that expensive, but there is a caveat to the saunas. You've got to buy from the right manufacturer because some of them use inferior glues, uh, woods, formaldehyde-treated stuff. And when you heat that, you're, it's toxin you out. So there's a lot of them that seem to be the good deal. Um, and there's really not a whole lot of them I would recommend. There's like two different brands that I would recommend, but I can, uh, we can discuss that if you want to go forward with getting a sauna for your house. They're super easy to build if you get the right ones and make sh making sure that you get the one that is really good for you is important to me. So I'm going to leave you on that note this morning that these are things to go, hmm, something to think about. Now, one more thing. Hmm, something to think about. When you think about it, it's an idea. When you write it down and go, hey, yeah, it becomes more real. When you plan it, it becomes a reality. When you schedule it, it happens. So if you today say, I'm going to go sauna at Perspire, or I'm going to order one or whatever, I am going to commit Wednesday afternoon, 4 to 5 p.m. and Saturday morning, 10 to 11 a.m. are my sauna times. And let me tell you something. Sauna is also my university. Put a TV outside of there and you have Bluetooth and it pipes in through your nice Nakamachi speakers. 
And you could set that 40 minutes or an hour or however long you're in that sauna and go, I'm going to learn a new skill. I'm, YouTube is a godsend. I mean, you know, we're live on YouTube. Uh, God, we better be this morning. <laughs> Check my stream flow here. That didn't sound right, but we better be live on YouTube as well. Uh, they change all the analytics from time to time, so stuff happens. But turn it into your university time. You can be learning or you can be relaxing, praying, meditating, whatever while you're in there. But turn it into a learning experience and you're doing something for your body. You see how we put that together? And uh, Tony Robbins cloned this uh that's not me. It's net time. No extra time. You're doing something while you're doing something else productive. Net time. I thought, what a cool idea. So I'm going to steal that from him. No. He knows. He knows we use it. And, you know, and that's, that makes sense because we're helping you. So stuff like that. Net time. No extra time. Maybe while you're cleaning house, you've got your headphones in and you're listening to an audio book. See, you're accomplishing two things at once, but it's a positive two things at once. All right. I have got to get off the show this morning. I hate to, to be like that because you know me. I want to deliver, 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 deliver. And yeah, which one is that? <laughs> My software is fighting with me this morning, guys. I want to over deliver to you guys. So live with faith, energy, passion. Always live your dreams. I got to stop smacking this microphone or it's never going to survive me. And 